Hello and a very warm welcome to today's session brought to you by Team Biotech Exam Prep. I hope all of you are doing really well and are excited to write your upcoming exam. Without further ado, I think let's just quickly get get cracking. Uh, I had uh, we had covered 80 questions yesterday. I shared five more questions on the uh, Telegram platform. I will share the remaining 15 as well on the Telegram platform for all of you to practice before your exam. Um, and make sure that all of you are very calm, very composed. As absolutely no need for you to be worried at all all your preparation will definitely uh, pay rich dividend in due course of time so there's absolutely no need for you to panic at all be very calm be very composed uh, don't be too harsh upon yourself is another advice because I see a lot of you complaining uh, and and being a little harsh on yourself that's really not required just try to be as mellow as calm composed don't be too harsh on your own self that's the advice that we're trying to uh, literally project here so let's quickly get cracked there uh, the target is 100 questions let's see how many questions are we able to do there will probably be a hard stop at 11 30 p.m today but don't worry the remaining questions are shared on the telegram platform nirja ugc net english that's the byju's exam prep net english uh, telegram platform we're also getting a couple of important initiatives anybody who's not filled the gate exam yet please do definitely fill the gate exam with the late ex admission fees the last date is 14th october post that you'll not be able to fill the gate exam on the telegram platform we'll keep on getting all the other uh, updates as far as your entrances are concerned so that all of you can actually uh, fill up those forms try to give as much practice as possible for all your exams don't ignore anything uh, don't just say that you know you probably don't want to sit for that particular exam still write fill the papers fill the form it's always good to have it on your resume it's a good practice uh, that you'll be doing you can always uh, try and figure out and measure your performance altogether. so do try and give these exams it's really going to be very helpful for all of you okay all right so without further ado let's just quickly get started with Tuesday's 100 questions express let's try and cover as many questions as we ca can till 11 30 p.m so here we go let's quickly get started this is the first question in playing in the dark Tony Morrison argues that what is Tony Morrison arguing what is Tony Morrison arguing what is it that we're able to see that Tony Morrison is predominantly arguing what is the correct answer here good evening everybody good evening Yogesh, Kriti, Zamar. Smruti Rekha, Tan Tehmeena, Kali, Shalini, Deepmala, Rupesh, uh, Ravi, Tulika, Vahida, Prashan, Das, Madhusmita, uh, Nikumoni, Gaurav, Suman. All right, let's let's quickly get started. Yes, we've started getting the right answers as well. We've started getting the right answers. This is the correct answer as uh, some of you have rightly uh, figured it out. So let's just take it bit by bit. This is a part which is important. This is a question that is uh, usually tilted and asked in different ways from post-colonial writings. And now they started asking you in detail, uh, in-depth questions altogether. And this is like one such example of that, right? Now, when we are looking at Tony Morrison's writing, and playing in the dark right uh, here we need to understand that Tony Morrison is situated in the Afro-American writings canon um, even uh, at nine o'clock I think uh, the, the class was curtailed but this is exactly what we were discussing in the classroom class about how you are able to see reimagining the nation is taking place so playing in the dark is actually trying to talk about perceptions of afro-americans right i think we had also done this particular uh, question earlier on also uh, so silence evasion rule one should contemplate the black presence in american literature uh, whiteness whiteness and blackness are constructs so this is a question that was just to you know sort of refresh your mind rejog your mind and see how many of you are awake because if you remember we've already done this question okay we've already done this question in yesterday's class as well okay moving on to the next question Carl Churchill's play cloud nine is divided into two acts anybody who will be preparing for the next net attempt try to make separate notes on postmodern drama 20th century drama cover it end to end all right cover it end to end altogether please remember that what is the correct answer here Okay, I think uh, some of you haven't got the one second. I'm just sharing the the link on the Telegram platform as Geeta has just messaged. I'm just sharing it. Okay. 
Okay, right. So uh, I can't see the comments right now because I just posted the question. So Carl Churchill's Cloud 99 here, what are you able to essentially uh, see? Okay, majority of you have got the right answer. C is absolutely the right answer. So British uh, playwright Carl Churchill is writing Cloud 9. This is having two acts all together. Act 1 is actually set in British colonial Africa and that too in the 19th century. And the second act is set in the 1970s, 80s altogether so 20th century so Victorian age and then you have the 20th century and what are you able to see you're able to see that British writers British drama as it is is asked uh, the play is trying to satirize Victorian society the project of colonialism that is coming under the radar when we are looking at Carl Churchill's cloud nine so here we are able to see it is divided into two acts with the duration of 25 years with the duration of 25 years so it is a two act play please remember that by British playwright Carl Churchill and the first act is set in the Victorian era and the second act is set in 1979 and there are 25 years that actually pass between the two acts altogether. It is trying to satirize the Victorian society, the project of colonialism, the restrictions that are there and what happens post the restrictions are removed in the 20th century. Moving on to the next question, the third question the extensive use of dashes, unconventional capitalization and idiosyncratic vocabulary is to be found in which of the following American poets? Which of the following American poets is actually using that? So who's the American poet that here we are able to see is using that? Very important poet that we are able to look at. And, and just be very calm. I'm really, I'm really happy to see how each one of you are supporting each other. So that's exactly what is required. Uh, all right. So I, 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 I think be very pro at this particular thing. That is something which is really required. Just a second. I'm just switching on the AC. Okay, right. So uh, by now, everybody's got it right. This is Emily Dickinson that we're talking about. This is Emily Dickinson. Uh, absolutely right. B, most of you have given it head at home, Gaurav, Inna, before that also. All of you, Shalini is like all set for exams. That's right. That's right. So it is Emily Dickinson. Uh, Emily Dickinson is having this unconventional style of writing, 19th century American writing. Oh, I'm so sorry. One second, I completely forgot I've not switched on the camera. So 19th century American writings is associated with all of these things. So of course, it's that's an important uh, aspect. So Emily Dickinson, Emily Dickinson uh, is using this unconventional style altogether. Uh, if later on you're preparing, please cover 19th century American poetry, cover Whitman, cover uh, how you're able to see Edgar Allan Poe writing the poetic principle and telling you about how the new American poet has to be or for that matter how Walt Whitman is changing the contours of American poetry by introducing free verse and a democratic style of writing. Emerson is trying to dis define the concept of an American scholar and the poet as well and here we are able to see that Dickinson is using a very unconventional style of writing. The meter is something which is often irregular. There are dashes that are being used. So very experimental kind of poetry that is coming. Okay, so that is something that you have to keep in mind. In which of the following plays by Frederico Garcia Lorca does death disguised as the old beggar woman enter and speaks of the fit, uh, the finiteness of life, the finiteness of life. Yesterday also we looked at Muriel Sparks Memento Mori. Muriel Sparks Memento Mori. Remember that you'll all die. Uh, so Muriel Sparks, the writer of Prime of Mystery and Rudy is talking about it. And here Frederico Garcia Lorca is coming uh, with death being disguised so death is being disguised so what is the correct answer here let's see how many of you are able to get the right answer here what becomes the correct answer here everybody where is it that we are able to see yes uh, nikomoni has given the right answer shilpa nandi ravi pande riti priya rupesh divyani das priyanka temina shalini neha yes absolutely right it's blood wedding uh, bodas de sangare this is a tragedy which is coming from the spanish dramatist who's frederico garcia lorca he is a spanish dramatist right so he is a Spanish origin dramatist that we are talking about. So he's a Spanish dramatist uh, that we are having. And here 
here you are able to see that uh, there is this representation of death that is coming right death is being personified and death is coming as an old woman and trying to tell us about finiteness uh, of life overall that is something which is being discussed over here so please keep that aspect in mind uh, you can read through if you want to take more uh, ideas but death is getting disguised and trying to tell us about the finiteness of human existence masks of conquest by gauri vishwanathan belongs to very simple question masks of conquest a very important work of english studies english in india we yesterday did a question on english in india as well uh, so english in india you can incorporate all these pointers uh, just go back reflect on them cover it this is like a really simple question everybody should get it right all together it's a classic work it's a classic work trying to tell you that you know how the britishers were using knowledge in order to control us all together what is the correct answer here everybody yes it is an example of post colonial literature post, so you know to the classroom students i've given a very interesting homework i told them to read post colonialism from two books uh, technically they have to submit they had to submit it today but now they're getting an extension because of the paper for two more days read post colonialism from two resources read post colonialism and cultural studies and read more on post colonial literature so that was the homework that they got so they were studying that uh, across the week so post colonial study is it's a work which is trying to tell you that how they are using missionary activities this is something before the classroom class abruptly ended today we were talking about how caribbean literature is also starting like that right caribbean literature also missionaries are coming settling coming to that particular region trying to impose their cultural traditions all together and gauri vishwanathan says it's insidious use of language english which the britishers are doing in order to colonize our minds all together which of the following scholars are not associated with subaltern study who is not associated with subaltern study who is not associated with subaltern studies subaltern studies diasporic literature these are very important topics that you should cover dalit writings subaltern studies diasporic literature you should have your own small little notes prepared and every time a question comes on this you should be able to add more to it you should be able to add more to it okay what is the correct answer here what is the correct answer here should be we've discussed it multiple times but there is no need for you to get worried about rc even yesterday we did a passage uh, that was there first of all rc if you know that will be very helpful otherwise you just have to read the passage properly and try and make sure that you're looking at the keywords that the uh, question is asking try to infer the meaning from the passage itself if you are able to look at who's the writer then nothing bad about it at all then you will be able to answer most of the questions if not then at least try to look at key terms that's the trick to solve the rc questions okay uh, what is the correct answer here should be i have already answered this bachi okay what is the correct answer absolutely right a pool uh, of you have got it right subaltern group of studies subaltern studies we are able to see that partha chatterji uh, ranjit guha dipesh chakravarty gyanendra pandey all of them are associated right sarojini sahu ajay sakaria all of them are associated even susi tharu is associated with it but sharmila regge is not associated with subaltern studies particularly don't get confused between dalit and subaltern studies okay so uh, sharmila rege is more associated with dalit writings but these are writers associated with the subaltern group of studies the subaltern group of studies getting inspired by marxist understanding so the subaltern studies group also called ssgs or subaltern studies collective so this is basically trying to apply to all the people who are actually post colonial students right post colonial study scholars uh, partha chatterji ranjit guha dipesh chakravarti gyanendra pande gyan prakash sarojini sahu ajay sakarya gayatri chakravarti spivak eric stokes susi tharu all of these are very popular very very popular subaltern study critics this question can come properly has been coming indirectly so please remember that which of the following novels by hanif qureshi opens with my name is kareem amir and i am an englishman born and bred almost almost and this almost is problematic this is trying to take us back to how we are able to see that whenever we will look at diasporic identity it's always a split identity it is the poetics of dislocation that we are able to look at right it's the poetics of dislocation that we are largely able to cater to so what is the correct answer here everybody what is the correct answer here 
should be completely depends upon you uh, i would always suggest that go in proper order but if you think uh, you can obviously change it but be very mindful of time be very very mindful of time so accordingly split it absolutely right this is buddha of suburbia this is buddha of suburbia uh, the writer is hanif qureshi kareem amir is of mixed identity and trying to tell you the second generation is also not really being able to fit in they are not able to fit in all together so that is what you are able to look at right so the buddha of suburbia is the right answer over here right buddha of suburbia is the right answer over here please remember that okay all right which of the following characters in the shadow lines 1988 is a skilled storyteller and possesses an atlas is a skilled storyteller and possesses an atlas what is the correct answer here uh divyani if there will be any session tomorrow i will keep you posted over telegram also okay so uh please remember that i i will uh, definitely keep you posted about that okay sorry right so here what is the correct answer here what is the correct answer everybody yes correct 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 most of you have answered it correctly shadow lines is another important work of indian writings that we are able to see uh, thridip is absolutely the correct answer thridip is absolutely the correct answer over here right shadow lines sahitya academy award winning work it's also part of many syllabuses uh, when we are looking at the ug pg level in india and here clearly trying to you can you can correlate this with benedict anderson Benedict Anderson in the imagined communities is talking about a very similar thing the shadow lines all together that is what you are able to look at okay all right here in oscar wilde's essay the dictate of lying and observation what does vivian defend what is vivian defending what is it that we are able to see that vivian is trying to defend so vivian is trying to defend something and what is it that vivian is trying to defend what is it uh, that we are largely able to see that you know vivian is actually defending what what becomes the correct answer over here let's just uh, try and answer this question no worries please don't get scared that's okay you'll all do really well don't worry about it okay yes majority of you have got this right majority of you have got this right again oscar wilde is important uh, please keep that in mind and here you are able to see that vivian is representing the concept of art for art's sake uh, in an in the telegram uh, in the telegram link that i had shared a day before yesterday uh, remember we were talking about how you are able to see that some of these french writers are contributing to the development of aesthetic movement altogether so the dk of lying this is an essay by oscar wilde and here you have a socratic dialogue between vivian and cyril all right vivian and cyril so these are the names of the two sons that he had and clearly you are able to see that the art for art sake uh, philosophy is getting propagated over here so walter scott's narrative poem the lady of the lake is divided into how many cantos the lady of the lake how many cantos is the lady of the lake divided into <laughs> yes that would um uh, tamina saying really good to see that everybody is answering it correctly so that's great all right that that's great uh, technically all right what is the correct answer here what becomes the correct answer here let's just quickly quickly see how many of you get it right uh okay uh, nikomoni has given the right answer a couple of gorov has given the right answer das priyanka has given the right answer suman has given the right answer absolutely right absolutely right so here you are able to see that uh, there are six cantos right there are six cantos all together the lady of the lake narrative poem by sir walter scott and it is set in the trosax region of scotland having six cantos how many cantos are there there are six cantos that are coming in all right and uh, this is telling you about a single day uh, that is taking place all together please be mindful of that alfred tennyson's locksley hall locksley hall is a tennyson's locksley hall is a what locksley hall is a locksley hall is a what is the correct answer here 
What becomes the correct answer here? Yes, Neha, Jain, Divyani, Shalini, Das Priyanka, everybody has answered it correctly. Rupesh, uh, Ravi, Sushmita, Shanti, uh, Spruti Rekha, Falguni. Very good, very good, very good. Right, so here you are able to see this is an example of a dramatic monologue. As it is, most of the times your Victorian writers are actually writing dramatic monologues only. So you can try, uh, try and make sure that you know, you're, you're being uh, particularly sure and confident about that. So Loxley Hall, Loxley Hall that you're able to see, it is trying to tell you about these emotions of a rejected suitor altogether, right? So Loxley Hall is absolutely absolutely the right answer over here uh, that it's an example of a dramatic monologue okay myth criticism and its view of literature as emerging out of core of a myth and a system based on recurrent patterns anticipated which of the following schools of criticism very simple question very very simple question what is the correct answer here what is the correct answer here archetypal criticism myth criticism what is it be very careful while answering this be very very careful recurrent patterns i've told you multiple times no 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 don't go wrong with these kind of questions everybody is answering archetypal criticism myth criticism in its view of literature as emerging out, out of a core myth as a system look at the word look at the word please don't go wrong with these kind of questions right now everyone uh, but hey, so system recurrent patterns what is it the minute you hear the word pattern you should immediately know it is talking about structuralism the minute the word pattern will come in what is it an example of it is an example of structuralism please don't go wrong with this Myth criticism equivalent to archetypal criticism is inaugurating it's helping us understand these structures that is the reason when you read books like pk nair uh, from otk nair and psychological criticism itself is talking about myth criticism before your topic on structuralism as well so don't go wrong with these kind of questions these are brownie points that net is actually giving you with be vigilant so it is not archetypal criticism it is structuralism look at these keywords recurrent pattern system this is like you know uh, the the same name why why would they give you archetypal criticism is the same thing altogether so please remember structuralism was anticipated by a myth criticism myth criticism associated with north of pride richard chase leslie filder daniel hoopman philip wheelwright very important okay they're trying to identify patterns so uh, basically narratology also narratology you can study it from peter berry right uh, so that is also something uh, that you can keep in mind so please remember all of these okay braj khachru braj khachru identifies how many phases in the introduction of bilingualism in english in india so when he is looking at bilingualism uh, what what are the various phases that we're able to see braj khachru very good, Divyani. Very good. Sometimes all of your comments are like really cute and funny. Okay, what is the right answer here, everybody? What is the right answer here? Absolutely right. Three, right? Three concentric circles. Also, if you remember, so Katru is important. Three phases in the introduction of bilingualism. First is the missionary period altogether. The second is, uh, you know, the demand from the South Asian public itself that you're able to see a local demand that is created. And there, uh, you know, so, so, so that is essentially what he's trying to uh, steer ahead and make us understand all together that there is a separate demand that is being created so first is the missionary phase second there is a self-created demand that is being created and the fact that you know the third point that you're able to see that eventually everybody is drawn into everybody is drawn into it's like you know a uh, period of uh, so I i'm sure all of you must have seen products how are products they they give us a free trial then when we get used to it then you know they start giving us a little bit of um uh, a little bit of um, of monetary incentives for that the real prices will come out so the three phases so to say that are coming which of the following is not an objective of Anne Gray's research practice for cultural studies ethnographic methods and lived cultures what is the correct answer here what is the correct answer here
No worries, Paida. Everybody, don't worry about it at all. Yes, that is right. That is right. That is right. Some of you have given the correct answer. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. I can see uh, Shalini, Harpreet Kaur, Rupesh, Nikomoni, Vahida, Sushmita, Neha, uh, Ravi Pandey, Tulika Devi, Falguni, Mosmi Khatun, uh, Diganta. Uh, everybody is giving the right answer. Akanksha, Diti Priya, Aspati, Rekha, everybody is right. So, Angry is actually writing, Angry's research practice for cultural studies is actually having three objectives, all right? First is to look at ethnographic methods that have influenced cultural studies altogether. The second is to tell us how research can be conducted. And third is to tell us about, you know, tell us about the evaluative criteria while conducting that particular research. So, very popular, very very popular piece of writing so to provide only qualitative research to provide only qualitative research information to cultural studies is not the correct answer so that is the reason in the in the sense this is not the objective so these are to give an account of the main ethnographic methods that are influenced that is there to offer practical guidance of craft of research yes it is there to provide help with key questions of evaluative criteria that is there okay so please remember that Manushi is an Indian journal associated with. Manushi is an Indian journal that is associated with Indian journals, subaltern journals, new journals, post-colonial journals. Very important category that you are able to see, which is commonly asked in your exams as well. What is the correct answer here, everybody? What becomes the correct answer here? Manushi, a journal about women and society, Indian magazine that is devoted to that is devoted to ritu has got it right that is devoted to feminism it is devoted to feminism so it is a journal about women's society uh, and here we are able to see it is devoted to feminism gender studies founded in 1978 by madhu keshwar very important and ruth vanita very very impressive writers till date i'm sure the critical commentary that you'll be able to see of them it's brilliant altogether Okay, all right. The uses of literacy, which of the following cultural studies theorists examines the influence of mass media in the United Kingdom, the, the uh, influence of mass media in United Kingdom. The influence of mass media in United Kingdom. What is the correct answer here? What is the correct answer here, everybody? What is the correct answer here? Yes, Richard Hogarth is absolutely the correct answer. Hogarth is writing the uses of literacy. Again, cultural studies critics, you will have to create a catalog. That is the best way to prepare cultural studies. You will have to create a catalog, a list of theorists who are coming in the kind of works that we are able to see. And here he also talks about massification altogether. So that is another important pointer. Okay, here we come. Uh, Shubhi, if you're there, right? I think Shubhi only, right? Direction. Which of the following? Uh, so, read the passage over here and then we'll answer the questions. I'm nobody. Who are you? Are you nobody too? Then there's a pair of us. Don't tell. They advertise, you know. How dreary to be somebody. How public like a frog. To tell one's name. To live June. To be admiring Berg. Right? Look at the first question. Look at the 17th question and please answer the question very, very quickly. Please answer the question very, very quickly. Where are these lines taken from? Uh, beautiful lines that are coming in. So if you are able to identify, it just makes your tasks a little more easier. But if you are not able to identify, that's perfectly all right. You don't really have to worry about it. Okay. Even then you can still try and solve it. This is Emily Dickinson. I'm sure most of you would have figured it out that, you know, this is Emily Dickinson's writings, poetry uh, that we're able to see. Yes, A is the right answer. Who answered it? Who answered it? Das Priyanka, Tehmina, no, Akara. Uh, very good, very good. Shalini, Chaudhary. Uh, so here, which of the following poetic devices emphasizes the poet's reluctance to be somebody? So look at this exclamation mark. Exclamation mark. Right? The exclamation mark. I am nobody. Are you nobody too? Who are you? Right? I am nobody. I who who are you altogether? There's another question, question number 18. Through which of the following images the poet displays her abhorrence for being recognized? Her abhorrence for being recognized. Again, so I hope you're you're able to look at it. Look at it, read the lines. Right? I think it was should be doubt at the beginning. Right? It was Shubhi's doubt, I think, at the very beginning. So you'd you'd have to read it, right? You'd have to read it. So if you're able to read it, you're able to get this question correct. Frog, can you just see that? 
so you will have to read the passage also if you are not able to identify if you if for instance you don't know that this is emily dickinson's writings okay no problems at all if you are not able to identify still you can at least read the passage and here you have the answer so that is what i'm trying to say look at the keyword and then go back and answer it as well okay so that is something that you're able to look at question number 19 what is the word bog refer to what is the word bog refers to in the poem what is it referring to what is the word bog referring to bog is referring to what what is the word bog referring to let's see how many of you are able to get that right this is again like Shalini, most of them are going to be easy only. Okay, so bog is actually now look at this uh, to an admiring bog. So this is actually symbolic of. Uh, no worries. Uh, it's 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 actually standing for isolation. All right, this is symbolic of isolation altogether. Okay, there's a twentieth question. What does the line in for? Don't tell. They advertise. You know, in today's time, don't tell. You're not supposed to be telling a lot of people what you're feeling. It just becomes gossip. Just tell your near and dear ones altogether. What is the correct answer here? What is the correct answer here? Yes, absolutely right. D is absolutely the right answer. It is the toll of the popular press and media that you're trying trying to say advertising, advertising. That is what she's talking about, right? So please keep that in mind. Okay, what is the overall tone of the poem? What is the overall tone that you're able to see that is there in the poem? The overall tone in the poem. What is the overall tone in the poem? what is the overall tone in the poem so so again you know these are the kind of questions where if you're reading you come to know the overall tone that you're able to see is actually mocking it's making fun it's making fun it's being very ironical in which of the following poems by alfred tennyson does a group of mariners are put into an altered state an altered state again if you don't know the answer opm and due state so which one can be the right answer so be alert is my advice to everybody it's not necessary that whatever you've covered everything will come identically but that doesn't means that you're going to be sitting like a, a nincompoop there thinking that oh my god all that i studied nothing has come don't get that negativity only be very alert be very vigilant answer smartly i'll give you this thing that you know out of the 100 questions that you attempt uh, you know most of the answers that you get it right is not because of your knowledge but because of your alertness and that is also because of your knowledge by the way because you read so much so please keep that aspect properly in mind and be very alert very very vigilant uh, be be absolutely available all throughout that's going to be like critically important a is absolutely the right answer it is the lotus eaters that we are talking about it is the lotus eaters which of the following victorian poets wrote songs before sunrise inspired after meeting mazini so after meeting mazini who's writing songs before sunrise songs before sunrise who's the person writing songs before sunrise so who's the person who's writing songs before sunrise songs before sunrise songs before sunrise who's writing it songs before sunrise it's ac swinburne okay it's ac swinburne please remember that songs before sunrise collection of poems that are coming which are related to italy so ac swinburne is the person there was a song of italy by swinburne as well and there's an italian patriot mazzini who's actually someone who's responsible for songs before sunrise jess butterworth's play mojo is jess butterworth Jess Butterworth's play Mojo is a what is it? Jess Butterworth's play Mojo is a what is it? Jess Butterworth's play Mojo is what? Nice, nice, nice. 
What is the correct answer here? Butterworth, Butterworth. What is the correct answer here, everybody? Yes, it is an example of a black comedy. Okay, so this is Mojo 1995 play, English playwright Jess Butterworth is coming. So Carl, uh, Carl Churchill we talked about, right? Cloud Nine and then Jess Butterworth. All of these are important. So if you're making notes right now and you're starting afresh with your preparation, British modern uh, drama, you can actually incorporate all of these, right? And it's a black comedy that's set in Soho. Um, and uh, there is uh, there is like you know, it, it there's there's this entire plot which is revolving around nightclub culture over. Robert Bolt's play, Robert Bolt's play, A Man for All Seasons, is concerned with which of the following historical personalities? A Man for All Seasons. Robert Bolt's play, A Man for All Seasons, is concerned with which of the following historical personalities? With which of the following historical personalities? What is the correct answer here? What is the correct answer here? Yes, it is Henry the Eight. It is Henry the uh, Eighth that we're talking about, right? For a man for all seasons, play by Robert Ball, based on the life of Sir Thomas More, by the way. Okay. Uh, in Robert Browning's Pippa Passes, which of the following Italian towns is mentioned? There is a mention of Italian towns. So, which of the following Italian towns are mentioned? Which of the following Italian towns are mentioned? Which Italian towns are mentioned? Yes, everybody, what is the correct answer here? Yes, absolutely right. So, a uh, majority of you are getting this right over here, and we are able to see it's a, a, a slow, right? A solo, a solo is mentioned. I think I saw D with a couple of you writing. Yeah, Dulal had written, uh, okay, Dulal's writing right now, Ravi Pandey. But yes, Pipa passes. Here you are able to see that a young, blameless, silk winding girl is wandering in, innocently in the environs of a solo, in the environs of a solo. A solo is a setting. The married couple Edward and Flora appear in which of the following marital drama? Edward and Flora. Edward and Flora are appearing in which of the following marital drama? They are appearing in which of the following? Uh, no worries, Nikumoni, don't be. Okay, what is the correct answer here? What is the correct answer here? Married couple, Where? what is the correct answer here? Absolutely right, Das Priyanka. C is absolutely the right answer. A slight A uh, by Harold Pinto is the right answer, where we are able to see that the character of Edward and Flora are coming, right? A, sli a slight A by Harold Pinto. It is trying to tell you about um, the two couples who are coming in, right? Edward as well as Flora. So both the couples are mentioned. Which of the following uh, Tom Stupart's plays are concerned with the relationship between past and present? It is actually concerned with the relationship of past and present. Past and present. So it's concerned about that relationship between past and present. What becomes the correct answer here? What is the right answer here? What is the correct answer here? Yes, Neha Jain, Abantika, everybody has got it right. Arcadia is absolutely the right answer. Arcadia, the 1993 play by Tom Stupart, is telling you about past and present, certainty versus uncertainty. We've actually looked at it multiple times. The kiosk theory is something which was highlighted, right? So that is being uh, told. Who uh, is Samson's wife in John Milton's Samson Agnes? So who is Samson's wife? Samson's wife. Again, modeled on Milton's wife. So three wives, all three wives are leading to the production of a work. Milton is really important. What is the correct answer here? What becomes the correct answer here, everybody? Delia. Delia is the right answer. Delia is the right answer. So this is a, clo a closet drama. It's a tragic closet drama where you're able to see that Samson's uh, entire secret is revealed by Delia, right? Delia is the one who's revealing that. Okay, here we come on to another question. Uh, first, read first read the passage very, very quickly. 
Uh, even the sun clouds this morning cannot manage such skirts, nor the woman in the ambulance who red heart blum, uh, blooms through her coat, uh, so astoundingly a gift, a love gift, utterly un unasked for by a sky, palely and flamely, igniting its carbon monoxides by eyes dull to a halt under bowlers. Oh my God, what am I? That there, that these late mouths should cry open in the forest of frosts and dawn of cornflowers. If you want, you can take a screen shot of that because the remaining questions you'll be able to answer it then right uh, questions 30 to 34 are going to be based on this particular passage itself right the remaining questions that you're going to be getting the four questions that are the five questions that are going to be followed they're largely going to be on this particular passage only okay this is by sylvia flat by the way uh, so four piece in october four piece in october by sylvia flat but still if you're not able to recognize still you can keep the um you know you can just keep the so-called uh, uh, the the passage and then try and answer this what is the wider connotation of four piece in the poem four piece in the poem what is the wider connotation if you want to go back to the lines go back to the lines try answering this question what is the correct answer Okay, let's go back over here. Let's go back over here. Uh, even the sun clouds this morning cannot manage such skirts, nor the woman in the ambulance who red heart blooms through her coat so astoundingly a gift. So if you just go further, what is it that it's representing? It's representing death. All right, it's representing death. Uh, somebody had answered, a couple of you have answered, Tehmeen, I think uh, above also saw. It's representing death. Please remember that. All right. The speaker is presenting death as something which is very beautiful because, you know, it's a kind of a restful escape from life. You are now completely running over the problematics of life altogether. So four piece and death, four piece and death, that is something. The woman, the flowers to the woman in the ambulance. So death's beauty that we are not able to understand. What is inferred through line three? Line three. If you've taken the screenshot and if you can just go back to the screenshot, uh, otherwise I'll post the timer. I'll just quickly show you the uh, lines as well. Line three, what is inferred via line three? So here you come on to line three, right? Even the sun clouds this morning cannot manage such skirts, nor the woman in the ambulance whose red heart blooms through a coat so astoundingly. So what is it that these lines are representing? What is it that you are able to see that, you know, the, the line is representing? So what is it that the line is representing? The line is representing a description that, you know, she's a flower in a bloom. She's a flower in a bloom. She's a flower in a bloom altogether. That is what you're able to see. In the poem, how many times did the speaker personify the sky? Again, now these kind of questions, that is what I say, that, you know, if not all, at least from the passage, these kind of questions you can actually answer. Just like last time, you were able to answer the frog question. Okay, just like last time, you were able to answer the frog question. What is the correct answer here, everybody? What becomes the right answer here? What do you think is the right answer here? What is the correct answer? Yes, very good. Manisha, Digansa, Chandani, uh, uh, everybody has answered it correctly, right? Everybody has answered it correctly. Neha, sky, how many times is it being compared? So three times sky is being compared, right? Three times. Even the clouds, the sun clouds can't compete with the four peas, right? So there are three times that you're able to see utterly unasked for by a sky. The sky is senitent. So three times you're able to see that. What does the poet mean? A gift, a love gift, utterly unasked for. Utterly unasked for. Utterly unasked for. A gift, a love gift, utterly unasked for. What is the correct answer here? What is the correct answer here? What is the correct answer here? So the poet is suggesting that the beauty of flowers goes unappreciated by the rest of the world, right? So we are not able to appreciate that. We're largely not able to appreciate that. It's just going unappreciated. It's just going unappreciated. In the last line, what does the phrase mean? In a forest of the frosts, in the forest of a frost refers to, what is this referring to? 
what is this referring to in a forest of the frost in a forest of the frost what is this referring to what is this referring to what is it that you you thinking it is referring to the forest of the frost what is it referring to it's referring to the world's gloominess frost gloominess of the world the gloominess that we are able to see of the world altogether right that is something which is being represented okay here we go there are two uh, there's an assertion and there's a reason the problem was posed for me personally at the age of 20 in the image of my father i had taken uh, a good look at him till then i didn't mark twain say at 17 i thought my father was ignorant at 20 i wondered how he learned so much in three years Indeed, this essay was inspired by cont contemplation of him over the years and is dedicated to him. My father's clothes represented his inner life very well. He was a South Indian Brahmin gentleman. He wore neat white turbans, a Sri Vaishnava caste mark, uh, yet wore tutel ties, uh, chromits buttons, collar studs, donned English sogi jackets over the muslin dhotis, which he wore draped in traditional Brahminical style. Okay, so that's the assertion and the reason. Just quickly try and analyze it and give us the correct answer. So, A.K. Ramanujan is writing this essay called Is There an Indian Way of Thinking? Is there an Indian way of thinking? These lines have been taken. Is there an is there? So, A.K. Ramanujan is coming. Is there an Indian way of thinking? Right? This is is there an Indian way? of thinking is there an indian way of thinking so this is by ak ramanujan and this is where the lines have been taken in from this is where the lines have been taken in from a is absolutely the right answer a and r are true and r is the correct explanation of a so uh, these are lines taken from ramanujan's is there an indian way of thinking and here we are able to see that you know he's he's looking at um basically a decoding every time using a lot of these keywords and trying to look at Indian way of thinking altogether. Assertion and reason. The language of African literature cannot be discussed meaningfully outside the context of those social forces which have made it both an issue demanding our attention and a problem calling for resolution. The choice of language and the use to which language is put is central. So what is the correct answer here? What is the correct answer here? And for these kind of questions, also, if you don't know the answer, don't get intimidated. There are other sets of questions that you can always. So this is taken from the language of African literature by Gugiwa Thiongo uh, in Decolonizing the Mind, where we are able to see. Yes, uh, Sak uh, there's, uh, Sakti Priya has answered it correctly. Absolutely right. B is the right answer. A and R are true, but it's not a correct assertion reason relationship. Okay, so these lines are taken from the language of African literature from Gugiwa Thiongo's Decolonizing the Mind. Basically, what are you able to see? Uh, that the, the both the sentences individually are correct. Both the sentences individually are correct, but not leading to an assertion reason relationship. Okay, uh, there are poetry collections and there are there's a list of poets. What is the correct answer here? There's poetry collection and there's list of poets. What becomes the correct answer here? What is the correct answer here, everybody? Let's just see how many of you are able to answer this question correctly. Yes, absolutely right. A is the correct answer here. Let's just quickly, quickly take a look at it. Uh, so this poem will provoke you. This poem will provoke you is by Meena. Uh, Meena Kandaswami is writing. This poem will provoke you. Atmospheric embroidery is by Meena Alexander. A necklace of skulls is by Eunice D'Souza. When God is a traveler is by Arundhati Subramaniam. 
right so that is the correct answer so this poem will provoke you is by meena kadan swami telling you about uh, the horrors of everyday life all together that is something which has been discussed uh, in uh, this atmospheric embroidery is by meena alexander right that is something that you are able to uh, see when god is a traveler when god is a traveler is by arundhati subramanya and yunus de sousa is also the poet who is coming in so here what are you able to see that indian poets indian poets Yes, Indian women poetry, Indian women writers also is something that you will have to look at because you do get these questions coming every now and then. Okay, novelists and novels, novelists and novels, very easy. Ashma Dangor, Dangor uh, is is again Dangor is a writer coming in most of your PhD entrances also. What is the correct answer here? What is the correct answer here? what becomes the correct answer here so uh, again even if you don't know the first one you can actually proceed with going on to the other questions as well okay so gm kotsi what is kotsi writing kotsi is writing waiting for barbarians so you can actually eliminate c because b is not one b is not one okay c is two so you you come to know that okay nadine godmer everybody this is also right this is also right right uh, so 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 that is where uh, like you, you're actually going to be getting stuck a little uh, but you don't have to worry about it too much but please remember that here when we are looking at these two writers are equally important these two writers are equally important and please remember dankor is the writer who's writing bitter fruit and bruce courtney is writing the power of one bruce courtney is writing the power of one so it is uh, b which becomes the correct answer b becomes the correct answer waiting for barbarians by jm kotsi the power of one is by australian writer bruce courtney right um, and and uh, you are also able to see july's people is by nadine godmer right uh, ashma dankor is the person writing bitter fruit all of these are important works if you were not aware about them do, do make a note of it and uh, revise it end to end in francis bernie's novella evelina an eponymous heroine comes out in the society in two locations they are what are the two locations that we are able to see no worries divyani more practice the things will be ironed out so don't worry okay what is the correct answer here what becomes the correct answer here let's very very quickly uh, complete this let's very very quickly complete this what is the correct answer here so basically it's bristol bristol and london all right so evelina you are able to see that there are two locations bristol and london bristol and london both of them are there so the novel is there and these are the two locations that you are able to see identify important theaters of the elizabethan period what are the important theaters of the elizabethan period you can use the elimination method your the important uh, theaters that are coming in do uh, uh, you know do compile your notes on elizabethan theater next time the theater compromises what are in theaters etc in your theater so all those questions become important so please do remember that okay what is the correct answer here right so the globe the globe and the swan peacock and grand is not the correct answer but these two are the important theaters globe and swan swan was built in 1597 in london pemberbrook's men were acting and globe was there in 1599 all right lord chamberlain's men is associated with that in which poem does matthew arnold express the dilemma wandering between two worlds one dead the other powerless to be born one dead and the other powerless to be born one dead and the other powerless to be born what is the correct answer here in which poem is matthew arnold expressing this dilemma in which work are we able to see this dilemma being expressed all together what is the correct answer what is the correct answer Yes, Samar, absolutely right. Stanzas from Grandi Thursar, absolutely correct, right? Wandering between two worlds, one dead and the other powerless to be born. Okay, very good, very important. The emblem is a poetic genre containing. 
<coughs> so sorry symbolic picture with text and verse exposition popular in early 17th century who popularized this kind of poetry through the work emblems through the work emblems who's the one who actually popularized the the style of writing through his work emblem what is the correct answer here everybody should get this question right uh, what is the correct answer here francis quarles right francis quarles Francis Quarles. Don't worry. We are we are, we are just going to be looking at fifty questions right now. Like I told you, we'll uh, I I really want to give you all a time for self study as well. So we'll stop at eleven thirty uh, p.m. But at least let's just cover fifty questions very very quickly. All right. Francis Quarles is uh, is is actually uh, associated with emblem poetry. Please keep that in mind. All right. Known as a religious poet as well. Which Byro uh, Byron's work begins thus? I want a hero, an uncommon want when every Every year, a mouth sends. Uh, every uh, year and month. Every year and month sends forth a new one. Every year and month sends forth a new one. What is the correct answer here? What becomes the correct answer here? What is the right answer here, everybody? What is the correct answer? Yes, right. Tulika Devi has answered it correctly. Very nice, Tulika. Tulika is doing really well. So, Tulika, we hope that you know you clear the exam and help us with the NET JRF for sure. Don Juan is absolutely the right answer. So, Don Juan is starting with the lines, "I want a hero, an uncommon want, where every year and month sends forth a new one." So, again, Don Juan that we are able to see. Which among the following recent novels is a retelling of Sophocles's Antigone? We just did that in the classroom class also the other day, right? I think where. Uh, one of you had answered it correctly uh moon moon don't worry we will uh, i i will i will try and figure it out right i will try and figure it out uh, how um, probably tomorrow i can i can take a quick session a quick free session to continue and cover the remaining ones so then we can paste it up correctly okay all right what is the correct answer here yes kamala shamshi is the right answer kamala shamshi is absolutely the right answer home fire is a retelling of antigone home fire is a retelling of antigone story right so that's true identify the two important works of paul de man from the following two important what writings of paul de man uh, paul de man from the following the two important works of paul de man from the following what is the correct answer here everybody the two important works of paul de man from the following what is the correct answer here yes absolutely right absolutely right so here again theories theories and their writings they, you usually getting a lot of these questions coming in every now and then blindness and insight and allegories of reading these are works by paul de man right blindness and insight and allegories of reading these are by paul de man paul de man is a belgian literary critic that you are able to see Okay, uh, Samuel Johnson denounced the metaphysical poet, saying about the beginning of the 17th century appeared a rare, uh, uh, appeared a race of writers that may be termed as metaphysical poets. In the biography of which of the following poets of life of poets did Johnson make this remark? Where is he making this remark? Where are we able to see that he is making this sort of a remark? Where is he making this remark? What is where is he making? Yes, Abraham Cowley, right? Abraham Cowley is absolutely the right answer. So in Cowley's life biography of Cowley is where he is making this sort of a remark. The terms of contact are not disagreeable to me, right? The above sentence contains an example of the terms of the contract are not disagreeable. There are two negative terms, dis and not, right? What is the correct answer here? What is the correct answer here? What becomes the the right answer in this particular situation? This is an example of litote. So always remember that. 
all right this is an example of litotes all together so when we are able to see either an understatement or two negations that are coming together so not disagreeable not disagreeable that is an example of litotes by the way who's the author of the following lines who's the author of the following lines to see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wild flower hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour what is the correct answer here to see a world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour what becomes the correct answer all right that's great that's great what is the correct answer here william blake amisha has answered it correctly very good amisha very good amisha has answered it correctly yes this is william blake this is william blake right so auguries of innocence that is where we are able to see these lines are coming in okay women in love what is winifred's uh winifred's dog winifred's dog pekinese dog called what is winifred pekinese dog called women in love winifred's pekinese dog what is it called what is it called what is it called yes very very quickly what is it called what is it called it is called lulu very good very good uh, sakti priya has answered it correctly sakti priya very nice bache sakti priya has answered it correctly i hope i have answer i have uh, spelled your name correctly it is lulu right it is lulu so winifred pickney's dog is called lulu women in love by dh lawrence sequel to lawrence's the rainbow that you are able to see brangwin sisters gudrun and ursula winifred is gerald's youngest sibling gerald is a lover of gudrun right and winifred and gudrun are bonding together all together which of the following new critics put forward the idea of heresy of paraphrase heresy of paraphrase was put forward by who had put forward this yeah 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 lulu Yes, everyone. What is the correct answer here? Right. B is the right answer. K and Brooks is absolutely the correct answer. Here is your paraphrase. The well-wrought or uh, new criticism becomes important. Let's do one or two more questions. Edmund Spencer's Colin Cloud comes home again is a fine example of Spencer's Colin Cloud comes home again. What is this an example of? What does this become an example of? what is this an example of what is this becomes an example of this is an example of a pastoral ecologue all right this is an example of a pastoral ecologue colin cloud comes home again this is an example of a pastoral ecologue please remember that and that also it is going back to theocrates it's going back to theocrates you can add it to your uh, classical literature notes as well an essay of dramatic poesy uh, john dryden refers to the most learned and judicious writer which any theater ever had learned and judicious writer which any theater ever had essay on dramatic poesy what is the correct answer here what is the correct answer here what becomes the correct answer Yes, yeah, Sakipriya is right. Uh, Sakipriya is right. So here, Ben Johnson is absolutely the right answer. He is referring to Ben Johnson as the most learned and judicious writer which any theatre ever had. Okay, in the essay on dramatic poesy. All right. Uh, and Shakespeare had the largest and the most comprehensive soul. Largest and the most comprehensive soul. This Australian poet was raised in New South Wales and grew up in rural Australian landscape. Nineteen forty-six, she published her first. book of poems 1962 she became co-founder and president of the wildlife preservation society of queensland this is a major hint this is a major hint and served as its president several uh, times thereafter identify the poet wildlife is the major most important hint that you are able to see you should be able to answer it what is the correct answer here everybody 
son uh, of Sam, Renu, uh, everybody has answered it correctly. Judith Wright is absolutely the right answer. Judith Wright is the correct answer. Afra Ben's Orunuku is set in. Where is it set? Where is the setting of Afra Ben's Orunuku? Orunuku is set in. What is the place where Orunuku is sent? Settings. The settings. Where is it set? Where is Orunuku set? Orunuku again, Afra Ben's writing. So where is it set? It's set in Suranam. It is set in Suranam, right? Afra Ben's Orunuku is set in Suranam. So very important. One of the finest examples of prose writings that we are able to see and a defense of blacks altogether and a expose, so to say, of colonial activities that were taking place. Who published the first collective, uh, collected edition of Gerard Manley Hopkins poems in 1918? Who is helping us get this together? Very famous writer getting this together. What is the correct answer here? Gerard Manley Hopkins poems, who is getting them together? Who's getting them together? What is the correct answer here? It is Robert Bridges. Singh Ji uh, has answered it correctly. It is Robert Bridges. Robert Bridges is the one who's getting the collection together. Please remember that. Samuel Richardson named his heroine Pamela after one of the characters in, after one of the characters in. There is a there is a very important work where we are able to see what is the correct answer here. Very good, very good, very good. The previous answer, all of you have answered it correctly. What becomes the right answer here, everybody? Yes, absolutely right. Philip Sidney's Arcadia is absolutely the right answer. So in Arcadia, you are able to see that the daughter of Basilus, king of Arcadia, is actually Pamela. And that is the basis over here. Painter once admitted that he first became aware of the dramatic power of the pause from seeing a popular American comedian. Which one? So Pinter had admitted that, you know, he became aware about the dramatic power of pause by seeing this popular American comedian. What was the name of this particular comedian that we are talking about? Who is this comedian that you are having? Who is this comedian that we are having largely? Yes, Jack Benny. Jack Benny is the right answer. Jack Benny is the right answer. So, uh, you know, Pinter's dramatic pauses called Pinter's pauses were actually influenced by Benny. They were influenced by Benny only. Charles Dickens' Bleak House is pointedly critical of England's. It's critical of what? Bleak House is critical of what? Yes, the pregnant pauses. Absolutely right. What is the correct answer here? What is the correct answer? So it is actually critical, pointedly critical of the Court of Chancery. Court of Chancery. Esther Summerson, the narrator, the only female narrator that we are having. The Court of Chancery, Jaundice and Jaundice case that is taking place. Which of the following is not true about the ideal state in Thomas More's Utopia? Thomas More's uh, Utopia, which is not true about the ideal state. What is the correct answer here? What becomes the correct answer here, everybody? So which of them is not true? Which of them is something that you are able to see is not actually true? It is not standing true over here. What is the correct answer? Yes, so C is absolutely Shakti Priya is on fire today. Yeah, yes, absolutely right. There's one religion guided by a principle of benevolent supreme being. That is not true. This is not true. Okay, which character created by Coldridge makes the following account of his of her arrow her harrowing experience? Five warriors seized me yestermorn, me even me a maid forlorn. They choked my cries with force and pride and tied me on the palfrey white. So where are we able to see? Where are we essentially able to see this coming in? Where are we able to see this coming in? What is the correct answer here, everybody? Yes, yes, yes. I think most of you have started answering it correctly also. Uh, A is absolutely the right answer. Geraldine is the right answer. Geraldine is absolutely the right answer here. Geraldine is the correct answer. Geraldine is actually trying to talk about the har harrowing experience in Christabel uh, by Coldridge. A young woman abducted by five men and then left under the oak tree. Right? She meets Christabel there. Uh, and, you know, all the story then, of course, continues. The metrical form 
of Gower's Confessio Amantis. Let's just do two to three more questions and then I'll tell you. Okay, let's just do quickly a few more questions and then I'll, I'll pause over here and then we'll, we can probably continue. What is the correct answer here, everybody? The metrical form of Gower's Confessio Amantis. The metrical form that is used by Gower in Confessio Amantis. The metrical form that is being used by Gower. What is the metrical form that he is using in Confessio Amantis? Confessio Amantis, the metrical form that is uh, being used, right? The metrical form that you're able to see that is largely being used. What is the correct answer? Right. C is absolutely right. Octosyllabic couplets. Octosyllabic couplets. Okay. What happens to the lock of hair at the end of Alexander Pope's rape of the lock? At the end of rape of the lock, what is happening to the lock of hair? What is it that we're able to see happens to the lock of hair? What happens to the lock of hair? Right. What is the correct answer? Right. So here it becomes a star, right? The lock of hair. What is happening to the lock of hair? It becomes a star. It turns into a star altogether. The bard, the iron lady, the king. These are examples of, these are examples of what? These are examples of, what are these examples of? What are these examples of? These are examples of what is it? What is what are these uh, clearly clearly standing as examples of? These are examples of antonomasia. Antonomasia, right? The epithet is being used instead of a proper noun. Change of name, bard instead of William Shakespeare. So it's an antonomasia. Which of the following novels by Margaret Atwood depicts the historical event of the notorious murders committed in 1843? The notorious murders that were committed. All the works are very important, by the way, of Margaret Atwood. Canadian literature is incomplete without a complete coverage of Atwood's writing. What is the correct answer here? What is the correct answer here, everyone? Alice Grace. Absolutely right. Alice Grace is the right answer. Alice Grace is telling you about the historical event, the murders of Thomas Kenner, the housekeeper Nancy Montgomery in 1843. So that is where we are able to see it was shortlisted for the booker also. Which of the following works by William Butler Yeats repudiates the sensual world in favor of the artifice, artifice of eternity? In favor of artifice of eternity? In favor of artifice of eternity? What is the correct answer here? What becomes the correct answer here, everybody? Sailing to Byzantium, right? Sailing to Byzantium. Sailing to Byzantium is trying to repudiate sensual world to tell you about the artifice of eternity. The artifice of eternity. Which of the following characters in Moby Dick falls overboard and turns insane as a result? Falling overboard and turning insane as a result. Turns insane also as a result. What is the correct answer here? Falls overboard and turns insane also. As a result, is, for, is, is like, you know, becoming insane as well. What is the correct answer here? It is actually Pip that we are talking about, right? It's Pip. Pip falls overboard and becomes insane. Becomes insane. Story of Ahab being told, trying to represent American desire. Which of the following poems by Seamus Henney is dedicated to the Irish poet Paul Muldoon? is dedicated to the Irish poet Paul Muldoon. Let's do it till 70 questions. After that, I'll let you go tomorrow if in case there will be a class for the remaining 30 plus 15. So 45 questions, 45. Why? Because 15 from yesterday and 30 from today. Then we can probably schedule a quick class uh, for the next time. Okay. Uh, perhaps we could just like, you know, get a class scheduled for the very next time. Vision is the right answer here. Vision is the right answer here. Okay. Please remember that Vision is dedicated to Paul Muldoon, right? He's, uh, Seamus Henney is getting the Nobel Prize also in 1995 and Vision is a short piece where uh, we are able to see the story continuing. In Canterbury Tales, who has a red face full of sores? Who is having a red face that is full of sores?
okay right so what is the correct answer here what becomes the correct answer here uh let's just quickly quickly uh take a look at it summoner is the right answer i think most of you have answered it correctly most of you have answered it correctly summoner is the right answer the summoner has red faces full of sores and tossers canterbury tales he's also corrupt unethical right uh so those are the character details the piece of speech is called what is the piece of speech called what is the piece of speech called the piece of speech what is it called how are we defining the piece of speech what are we calling the piece of speech this is like a really simple one right this is like a really really simple one what is the piece of speech called the pace of speech is called tempo all right the pace of speech is called the tempo okay the last question uh, list 1 and list 2 let's just quickly answer this very simple again so uh, i'll try to schedule a class tomorrow otherwise don't worry i'll share the questions on the telegram platform be very calm be very relaxed i will be sharing a message as well uh, write your paper well let's just do a stock check in a post mortem of the paper on the 13th right we'll meet meet once for sure to do a sort of an analysis anybody who is writing the paper um if you want to like you know share what kind of questions have come please feel free to mark us an email uh, on neerja Rahija at the rate grade up dot co. Uh, please feel free to uh, you know let us know about the questions that will be coming from both co. This is just co co uh, right. Uh, just let us know about the questions that are coming. Just let us know about uh, any any pattern that you observe this time from literature. So it will be very helpful if you can write down your overall experiences also and send it to us, which will help us create a good analysis uh, altogether. Right. Okay. Moving on to the last question. Like we said, let's look. Look at how many of you are able to answer it. B is the right answer. Absolutely right. Sexual politics is by Kate Millett, right? Uh, that's true. Literature of their own is by Elaine Shaw Walter. Thinking about women is by Mary Ilman, Mary Mary Ilman, and the Laugh of Medusa is by Helen Sixo, right? So that is the correct answer. Sexual politics is by American feminist Kate Millett. Literature of their own is by American feminist Elaine Shaw Walter. Thinking about women is by Mary Ilman, Laugh of Medusa. is by french feminist helen sixo okay also coming up with ikritya feminine concept okay good luck everybody let's just i'll i'll try to see what i'll do is uh, tomorrow i will um uh... right tomorrow i will uh, of course try and schedule uh, the the app class with 30 plus 15 questions so that we can just like do a sort of an ice breaker analysis but best of luck i'm sure each one of you will sparkle really bright uh, don't stress too much don't be harsh on yourself it's okay it's not the end of the world 1% of the preparation doesn't goes as per plan we can always take out a plan b for sure uh, so nothing to really worry about okay be happy be confident uh, thanks a ton everyone for joining in great tulika i'm so uh, so happy to hear that Thanks, Demina. Good night, everyone. Take good care of yourselves and shine bright, sparkle bright. And I'm sure you're going to be nailing it. So don't worry too much. Have confidence in yourself because I have a lot of confidence in all of you. Uh, so technically, uh, do shine bright. I will try and meet for sure. Uh, yes, of course, of course. Uh, I will try and meet for sure tomorrow as well. Let me uh, speak with the team and probably schedule like an application session if nothing else. Okay. Best of luck, everyone. Take good care of yourselves. Uh, eat well. Be calm. Reach your examination centers on time don't stress at all everything is going to be fine all right thanks everyone god bless good night sweet dreams take care uh yeah 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 okay mun uh, mun mun is saying that please take a class tomorrow i will take a class fine uh perhaps not on youtube but on application it will be like a free class don't worry about it i'll share the link on the telegram platform okay let's meet tomorrow then for sure all right thanks everyone take care god bless i'll share the link on the telegram platform please take a look at that okay god bless bye